All right. So today's lesson will involve uh, or introduce 2D sketching in SOLIDWORKS, works, which is an integral part of designing parts. So whenever you're designing parts in SOLIDWORKS, you always want to start 2D. So we're going to start as soon as you open SOLIDWORKS, you're going to want to just simply create a new part. part. And for your units, you want to stick to IPS or inch pound seconds, as well as the ISO standard. And this should be the default settings. So you can just leave it like that. Click OK. Then it'll create your part here. So here I have a PDF that has many kinds of practice uh, sketching, like uh, things you can practice sketching. And um, I really like this because there's it, it involves all types of uh, shapes and stuff like that. So I did send the link and I'll include that link uh, with the recording so you can practice yourself. So with your part open, to begin your sketch, you're going to want to go to the sketch tab, then click sketch up here. And then it's gonna give you various planes which you can begin to sketch on. So you have a top plane, a top plane, a front plane, and a right plane. Um, it doesn't matter too much which plane you sketch on um, if you're making a part for like a larger assembly. So I'm just gonna select the front plane and then by clicking that front plane, it takes you to a straight on normal view of the front plane. And you can see here, this is the origin. And the origin is just your starting or coordinate zero, zero. It's where you start. It's this. And so we're just gonna start with a rectangle. So you see here, corner rectangle. And in the rectangle option, you have various drop downs that create different types of rectangles or even parallelograms. So we're just gonna start with a basic rectangle. We're gonna do a one inch by two inch square. And then, yeah, we'll start with that. So I just drew out a rectangle here, but you may notice that some of the lines are black and some of the lines are blue. And that is crucial because if you have blue lines, you could see here it means it is not defined. Your, your sketch is not defined. And when you are drawing out a part, you want to make sure that everything is defined or else you can run into issues later down the line um, when you're making assemblies and stuff like that. So to define this rectangle, right? Or in other words, define um, how long each length, uh, each side of the rectangle will be, which is crucial, you're going to want to use smart dimension, which is under the sketching tab. Smart dimension is a crucial tool to quickly and easily define basically anything. You can define a line, you can define a diameter of a circle, you can define many things, um, angles too. So by selecting the smart dimension with the smart dimension selected, I can then click on um, one of the sides of our rectangle. And then it's gonna give us a, it's gonna give us a value when we uh, click one of the sides that is rounded to the nearest um, hundredth of a decimal. So you can see 0 0.2. 0 0.02. So this value here is not completely accurate. Even if this value shows 2.00, that does not mean it is exactly two units or two inches. So you want to make sure that you click 
and then you could see here there's a uh, it's a pretty long decimal and you just want to input an exact value and that's very important so in our case we're just going to do two units two inches and now it'll make this uh, top side of our rectangle exactly two units and if we click it again with the smart dimension we can verify that our length is exactly two units. So same thing with our height, you can see 1.08. So we're gonna wanna click and simply input one on the keyboard and then press enter. And you can see here, you can verify that we have sketched out a two by one rectangle. And another thing to note is in the bottom right, you can see how it says fully defined. And you can also see that all lines on our, um, on our sketch are black. And again, what that black, what those black lines mean, are, and also the corners, the points on the corners are also black. And what that means is that your sketch is completely defined. So you, even if I drag this point, so if, if I click on this point and drag it, nothing happens, nothing moves or changes. Same thing with this side. If I try to move it, it will not move because it is fully defined. And that's what you want when you're sketching. You want it to be fully defined. So also I'm gonna go into what you may notice what some of these symbols are. Um, and it's, it could, it's pretty helpful to know what they mean exactly. So the, what these little green symbols are, are what kind of, um, they signify various properties of the line. So for an example, you see this um, vertical black symbol. And basically all that means is that um, this line is just vertical, that's all it means. And you could see this horizontal one. And what this means for the top line is that it's just horizontal. It's, it's perfectly horizontal and this is perfectly vertical. Same with this bottom line, it's perfectly horizontal. And this left line, it's perfectly vertical. So we have a perfect rectangle, two by one inches. So now that we got some of the basics, we could start with trying to sketch out a very basic um, sketch here, which I have on this PDF. So what I'm gonna do is, um, if I want to open a new part, just go in the top left, under File, New, and the Part. And we're just gonna create a new part where we can then begin sketching. So picking any one of the sketch tools, I just picked rectangle again, because, or actually, sorry, I'll pick line. Line is just, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm gonna select front plane. And now I'm just gonna draw a vertical line like that. So I'm not sure why. Okay. And also, if you have a issue where you're kind of off angle and you just want a straight on view, um, so you see after I drew my line, I can simply click the line and then do control eight. Control eight, and it gives you a perfect straight on view, which is very helpful, which is what I just did there. So we have a line and it's not defined. The only relation that it has is that this line is vertical according to this green symbol here. So because of that, it's not, um, because it's not defined, I am able to change its length by simply dragging the end point. So you could see its length can be changed, which it's not necessarily a good thing. So we got to define it. So I'm going to start with this 18 unit long line here. So 
what I'm going to do is select smart dimension, select the lion, click, and then input 18. Enter. So now you can see we have our line that is 18 units tall, and it's perfectly vertical, as in the diagram here. So yeah, pretty simple. So now we're going to start with this horizontal 30 long line. So we're going to want to start from this top point, and SolidWorks is nice in that it you can easily snap to various uh, points. So like, say if I wanted to start a line from the midpoint, I can. I can start a line from the midpoint, but obviously we don't want that. So I'm just gonna control Z and I'll undo it. Control Z will undo any action in SolidWorks. So we're gonna start from the top. And now we have a line that's starting from the top because we started from this point right here. Um, oh, I don't want that. So I'm just going to press escape. Okay, so now we have a line starting from that top point. So you may see these uh, dashed yellow lines, and basically those are kind of um, guides, I guess. So if you want to just make a horizontal line, like so, it's really easy. And you could see that little symbol with the horizontal line, which means it, uh, you're going to create a line that's horizontal or if I want a vertical line, or if I want a horizontal line going this way. So we want our line to go to the right. So we're just gonna have our line kind of be uh, guided by this yellow dash line. We're just gonna click. Doesn't matter how far out you click, because remember we can still, this is not defined yet. So we can change the length to however we want. So, you notice here how the point, this end point here is blue. It's like a dark blue. So that means this is not defined, this line. So to define that, again, smart dimension. And we're going to want to define that line as 30. By clicking on that line with the smart dimension tool selected, clicking again, and simply entering 30. Enter. So now we have two lines and we can, we're kind of constructing this uh, or sketching out this shape here. So I have the gist of it. You can kind of sketch through this really quickly. So same principle, just a, a vertical line going downwards. Again, defining that 10. So yeah. So um, to sketch this shape or, or this next line, you could see here that uh, the total length of uh, from this line to here is 50, and we drew that 30 long line. So it's just simple math: 50 minus 30, 20. So we're gonna want to draw a horizontal line. going to the right and define that as 20 units like so okay so we're just going to keep going through this so starting from that end point going down smart dimension 20 again Okay, so this sketch actually has an angle in it, which we'll, which we'll get to in a sec. So, um, so I'm not going to continue from this point yet. So instead, I'm going to kind of work on our the left side here. So we need to create this line here, which is 44 long. So starting from our origin. And ensuring that the line that we draw has that little symbol that signifies that you're creating a line that's perfectly horizontal. So simply left click. Then 
define that as 44. Okay, so, and then we have a line going down, ensuring we have that vertical symbol. And this one is pretty precise, 18.34. That, okay, so at this point, we're going to want to roughly sketch um, this angled, uh, these two angled lines here. So they don't necessarily have to begin from any of these endpoints. We just kind of want to eyeball it, and then by inputting by inputting um, the given uh, dimensions, like the length and the angle, we can kind of connect everything together. So I'm just going to create a horizontal line down here. Again, simply just eyeballing it. So this line isn't defined at all. You can see it's completely blue. I can move it up and down and to the, to the side. I can change its length, all that kind of stuff. The only thing with this line is that it's horizontal. That's the only rule, I guess, with this line is that it has to stay horizontal. So we're just going to create another line that's again, just slightly angled, also ensuring that we're not creating any additional relations with this line. So you can see that little white symbol. That's meaning, that means that the point where I'm gonna end this line will be horizontal with this point, but we don't want that. We just want a line that is simply starting from this point and goes out, um, goes up at a slight angle. So we just want a line like this. So we don't want any um, relations with this line either. So we kind of have this um, kind of just eyeballed and sketched out. So now what we can do is we can create, we can smart dimension uh, with the smart dimension tool. We can, we can define the angle between these two lines here. So clicking this line it'll just give you a length but we don't want that we want to create an angle so click this line and then click this line and now it gives us an option to define the the angle between these two lines so click again i believe it's 144 yeah so we want to create an angle, uh, we want to define the angle between these two lines is 144 degrees. So now that we have this part, we can define the length as well. So another important thing is, uh, is that when you're defining, you want to define the length correctly. So we don't want to define the length of this line like this, because it'll be inaccurate and it won't be correct. Instead, we want to, <clears throat> we want to ensure that um, our definition line is parallel with the line that we're trying to, to that we're trying to define. So we want to define it like so. Forty-two units. And again, it's not completely accurate just yet, but we will get to that and how to connect everything. Okay, so. We're going to define this line now, the horizontal one, 46 units. So now the length and the angle of the two lines are defined. However, you may notice that we're still able to move it around as it is not defined. Uh, the, I guess the location of these two lines are not defined yet. So. So we could see that this angled line here meets up with this 20 long line. So what we can do is we can make, we can drag this point here. Oh, whoops, sorry. We can drag this point and simply drag it on top of that endpoint of that 20 long line. And then it's just simply releasing left click. That kind of attaches uh, the, this bottom part we made to, to begin here. 
Awesome. So now with that, we have that. We can sketch out the rest of this. So we have a line that we can go vertically here, uh, press escape, and then we have to define it. It's always important to define every little line, but at the same time, not being, not being redundant with your def uh, definition. So if something is already defined, you don't want to over define it. For an example, um, say defining this line and this line, the length between here, making this definition won't contribute to anything because SOLIDWORKS can already resolve the what this length is because we have we have this length defined, this length defined, and this length defined. So if we try to, it'll probably give us a warning. Yep, make uh, make dimension driven, which we don't want. So we're just going to click cancel. So that is an example of over defining, which is also bad. So you don't want to be under defined or over defined because SOLIDWORKS can resolve uh, things like what I just showed you already given this length, this length, and this length. Anyway, I'll define this line. It's 9.78 units. And then simply we just have this, um, we have this uh, diagonal line. Uh, and you may notice it ha doesn't have a length or anything, but that's because we don't need it because all we simply have to do is just connect the, these two points here. And then, and you may have noticed that the inside area became gray. And that just means that whatever you were sketching is now enclosed. So you can do things such as extruding it because in order to extrude a sketch, you need to uh, be, you need to have an enclosed area. So for an example, so now that we have an enclosed area and that we have this thing fully sketched out, we can do uh, various things. and. The most common one of those would just be simply extruding. So it automatically selects that enclosed area since it's the only, um, it, it kind of knows that what we're, that we're working on this. So if I wanted to extrude it, I could say two inches or for an example, or maybe 10 inches. So now we have a 3D part that is based upon this 2D sketch and this part is 10 inches thick. So, but we're not gonna get really into 3D too much this lesson. So I'm just gonna remember uh, control Z and that'll just undo it. And now we're back to where we were to our fully sketched out part. All right, so now um, I will get into some more advanced shapes and how to sketch and define uh, the various shapes, and as well as explaining what some of these different symbols mean in like these kind of sketch drawings, or um, and you and how these kind of drawings are are uh, kind of they're kind of standardized with like engineers and stuff. So, like for an example, R R means radius, and the definition of radius is the center of a circle to the to the outside uh, or to the circumference. So you're, you're just simply drawing a line from the center to the edge of the circle rather. And whatever that length is, is the radius. And then diameter is simply two times the radius or a line that intersects the center point of the circle and reaches both sides or both edges of the circle, that's the diameter. Anyway, I'm going to just simply create a new part here. So I'm gonna simply create a new part and where should we start? I will start with the circle here. So we're gonna select the circle and by selecting the circle, it gives us an option or it gives us three options of uh, what plane we can draw on. So we want to just select front plane. And you may notice we have kind of an off angle 
view. So I'm just going to draw the circle anyway from the origin. Uh, it doesn't matter how big you make the circle or if you make a vertical relation to the origin, you don't, it doesn't really matter because a circle is, even if I draw this uh, with a vertical relation, it, it'll, it'll be the same if I drew it any other way. Anyway, so I'm just gonna draw a circle. And you, again, you could see we're kind of off. Um, we're not, we don't have like a straight on view. So again, I'm just gonna select that circle and then do control eight. And that is simply a shortcut to normal two, it's called. And that just gives you a straight on view. So control eight with a uh, with any kind of sketch selected, we'll just normal to that sketch or give you a straight on view um, on whatever plane that you drew that uh, sketch on. Okay, so we have a circle, um, it's undefined at the moment. So it's, uh, I can change its size by just dragging the edge. So we don't want that. So we want to define it. So we could see here that its radius is 1.6. So if I wanted to define its radius, um, what we can do is we can just define its diameter. So now it's giving us a option to define its diameter. So again, diameter is two times the radius. So what we're going to want to do is just simply multiply this value by two, which will give us 3.2. Reason being is that diameter is two times the length of the radius. So this is defining the diameter of the circle. So even though it's a different number, they're the exact same. OK. And this symbol um, represents diameter, a circle with a line going through means diameter. OK. So now that we have that drawn, the next thing I would draw or the next thing I would do is this circle here or this partial portion of a circle. So you can see that it is defined uh, with having a radius of three. So that means it has a diameter of six because three times two is six. So we're just going to draw a larger circle. The size doesn't matter. So we just draw a larger circle. So it's not defined yet. So it's, in, it's very important that we define this as having a diameter of six. Okay, so now that we have this larger circle, um, you may notice that in this sketch, it doesn't have the rest of the circle, but I will get to um, how to trim that and everything. Okay. So. Okay, so now it gives us this, um, this vertical line of 10, and that goes to uh, the bottom of our circle. So we know that the rate, so this is some basic math uh, we just have to do, it's pretty simple, but, that, but we know that the distance from the center to the bottom of this circle is three, since we know that the radius is three. So starting from this point here of the circle that we can just simply snap to, that uh, this point here is horizontal to the center point of the circle. So drawing from this point, uh, going vertical, we're just gonna draw a line that has a vertical relation as well as being tangent to the circle. And tangent just means when a line touches a circle a single time. So we have a vertical line from this point of the circle. And I'll explain uh, these symbols here. So this symbol here, the line and the circle means tangent. And tangent again means that the line touches the circle at only one point, which is this point right here. And then this other symbol just means coincident. So 
that just means the the endpoint the 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 line is just touching another line basically that's all that means so so yeah anyway so we know that this length here we have to define as 10 but we already have uh, three inches or three units of length. So we can just define this as seven. Because seven plus three, which is the diameter or the radius of the larger circle here, adds up to 10. So we, just, we can just define this as seven. So yeah. All right. So next, what I would start with is this bottom line here. So starting from the bottom part of the larger circle, just simply creating a horizontal and tangent line. And same principle, we already have that three length, so we can just subtract uh, three from 14. So we can just define this as 11. So even though these values are different from the diagram, it means the exact same thing. And again, um, well, so in CAD, there's various ways you can get to the exact same outcome. So just because uh, how I have it defined doesn't exactly match, you, you um, I basically have the same portion of this sketch here. It's the exact same, despite some of the values being slightly different. It's just the way I defined everything is just different. So that's important to remember. So there are various ways to get to the exact same outcome in when you're catting, especially with sketching. So next, I'm just gonna do this vertical line very simple, draw a vertical line. And then defining that is three. Another line, defining that as three as well. And then a vertical line starting from that point going straight up is, oh, sorry. So I accidentally clicked exit sketch. So if you ever do that, um, you want to go to the left column here and it shows you all your sketches, all the features. So all we have is a sketch. So I'm just going to right click it, edit sketch. So now I'm back into the sketch um, after I accidentally clicked edit sketch. So yeah. Then I'm going to define this as four. Oh, okay. So here you may notice, uh, or I noticed that I have blue lines. And the reason being is that this point here does not have a relation to this point as being horizontal. So there's nothing stopping this from being able to get moved around in this fashion. So to fix that, all I have to do is click this line here. And I want to add a relation that basically just says that this line must be horizontal. So I'm going to click that line, click horizontal. And now I made a rule or a relation that ensures that this line stays horizontal. And now that you know, now you could see that the lines are all black, which is good. And you can see here, fully defined, which is also a good sign. Okay. So next, um, I'm just going to make an angle line starting from here and just roughly eyeballing it. it. Doesn't Nothing has to be defined just yet. So I'm just drawing a line that goes here. So it's not defined. There's no relations or anything just kind of getting it on there, I guess. And then we can kind of connect everything eventually. All right. So next, what I would do is creating this circle up here that has a diameter of four. 
because diameter is that little circle with the line striking through it. So all I'm going to do is um, just in an empty space at, uh, up top, I'm just going to create a circle. And then I'm just going to define this circle uh, with what we know, uh, which is that it has a diameter of four. So we just defined, a, uh, we just have a circle that's defined as with a diameter of a, a four. And you can see we can drag the circle all around. So what we want to do is drag the circle to, so we want the center point of our circle to be horizontal with this top line here. So we're, we're just going to drag it so that we make that horizontal relation. So now we have a, a circle that has a, that has a horizontal relation. So we can, uh, okay. so to do that, I'm going to control left click this point, control left click this point. So I have these two points selected and I'm going to just create a horizontal relation. So now I made a rule saying that these, this point and this point must be horizontal with each other. So now you can see I can only move it on um, along this horizontal line. Okay. So next what we have to do is make it so this point and or er, yeah, this point of the is is tangent with the edge of our circle. So to do that, I'm just gonna select this point select the edge of the circle and what i can what i should select is coincident and coincident just means that it's uh solidworks is gonna resolve um or it's gonna figure out how it can make this point connect with the edge of our circle so we're just gonna select coincident and you see here now we have another rule or symbol and that's just saying that this point is touching the, or it meets with the edge of our circle. So now that we have that defined, you can draw this horizontal line here, starting here at this point, which is horizontal with the center point of our circle. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna draw a horizontal line. The length doesn't matter because we're gonna define it. And then we're going to define that as 2.4, like so. Okay. So you remember this line we roughly drew out. So it is not defined at the moment. But what we can do is connect the end of this line to that point there. And then it's defined. Okay. So we need one more thing. So... For this, we want to use the polygon tool because this is just a simple uh, equilateral octagon or hexagon, sorry. So polygon is just a, uh, you can, just, you can uh, change various parameters such as how many sides, stuff like that. Anyway, so we're gonna draw a polygon in our case, we're going to do a hexagon. So we have six sides, and that's the default value. So we're just going to draw a polygon or a hexagon. So you may notice that in this drawing here, the top and bottom are horizontal. So we're just going to draw a hexagon here. So it's not really defined. The only uh, rule with this hexagon is that um, it stays centered in the center of the circle since that's where we started the drawing. So now what we can do is we can say we can make a relation. So by clicking this line, we can make a relation saying that this line must be horizontal. So clicked horizontal. Now you can see that our hexagon kind of matches how it is in the sketch. Okay, 
And the next, all we have to do is uh, define its size. So in this drawing, how they define its size is from the leftmost point uh, to the rightmost point, and it's defined as two. So I'm gonna click smart dimension, then I'm gonna click this point and then click this point. And then now we can define the size of our um, hexagon here, which is two. And then now you can see everything is fully defined and we basically have uh, our thing sketched out. So you may have remembered where I said earlier um, how like we can clean up kind of um, some of the excess lines. So that is also really simple. So there's a tool called trim entities here. And basically what that does is you can kind of use it to cut out like unnecessary lines, things you don't need. So for example, if I wanted to cut out this portion of the circle that isn't really used, I can just, uh, by holding left click, just uh, trim that. Same thing with this circle, I'm holding left click, trims that part. It just trims any unnecessary parts of the line that aren't really required, I guess, for um, SOLIDWORKS to resolve um, the, your sketch. So I just trim that out. And now we have a 2D sketch of, of this exact thing. And again, uh, you may notice that we have like gray spaces, uh, which means that SOLIDWORKS recognizes the sketch as being enclosed. So again, we can do, we can do something like extrude boss space. And then say we wanted to extrude this. So say 10 inches for an example, we made a 10 inch extrusion and now we have a 3D part based on that 2D sketch. With some more advanced features such as like circle as well as the hexagon cutout. So yeah, there's that, how to sketch that and uh, prepare your sketch to be able to be extruded and stuff like that. And you can also see here fully defined, which is good. That means nothing is, there. there is enough information for SOLIDWORKS to completely resolve the sketch. So yeah. All right. So there's various shapes here. Uh, I'll try to find something more advanced. Okay. So, hi, Robert, first of all. Um, I may have missed it, but did you define what exactly extrude means in this situation? Uh, no. So extrusion simply means um, you're taking a 2D plane and you're basically, um, how do I explain it? It's, you're taking a 2D plane so in our example here, and you're just kind of, um, you're just elongating it, I guess, and you're filling it with material, whatever uh, material uh, that you would like, which you can configure. So say if I extrude this, I can, I can also um, change the material here right-clicking where it says material, edit material. And then I can change it to something like wood, for instance, like balsa wood. So there's a preset and it gives you a cool visual representation of the wood and stuff. So yeah. For those of you who may be geometry people, you're adding a Z axis is basically what extrude means is right. when you're creating a sketch, you have an X and a Y. And then as soon as you um, extrude, you're, you're working then in three-dimensional space and you're extruding into a z-axis. Correct. Yeah, that, that was a better explanation. <laughs> so, yeah. 
I like both. That made sense. Um, I didn't want to interrupt earlier, but I was trying to open the app and it's saying that the license is expired for me. Um, license is expired. Um, give me one second. I'm find uh, where I put that code. Do you need the um, this right here, the uh, serial key? Well, yeah, that's what I had put in when I like registered and downloaded the app. Like it, I have it downloaded and everything. Just when I tried to open the app, it gives me like this student edition has expired. Please browse the website to find out about the new version. Hmm. Uh, could you send a screenshot of the error? Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Thank you. And Kat, if you can copy me on that too, it's possible our subscription has expired. It shouldn't have, um, but... Uh, I'm mean, double checking right now. If Roberts is working, it should still be working. I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. So, uh, okay. So, I think this shape or this sketch would be a good way to show arcs, how to do arcs. So start the sketch off with a simple circle in the center. And then selecting the circle, I can do control eight to normal to it again. So I have a straight on view. So uh, so I have a question about um, how this sketch is defined, uh, Kim. Do you know yeah. what the comma means? So my best guess is that we're looking, and there's only one of those. So generally what that would what that would mean, and usually you'd use an X, you'd do eight times four, and that would mean there were four holes, but there aren't. So my guess is here, um, that's meant to be a decimal point. And the only reason it's not is I'm wondering if this is um, using a European standard or something along those lines, uh, which, would, okay. which would use a comma instead. Right, understood, okay. So I'll just assume that's, okay, okay, 8.4. 8.4 would be a reasonable size based on the rest of the sketch too, so. Right, okay. Okay, so thank you. No problem. Okay, so I have that center circle sketch. So the next thing I would have to figure out is um, what to do next, since, um, this one is a little bit more challenging with like kind of figuring out where to get started. So what I would do next is, um, I will I will draw a line that goes through the center point of the circle that is 32 units long. 
So I can make use of a midpoint line. And with, with the midpoint line, I can start from the center point of the circle and then going horizontally out, uh, ensuring that there's a horizontal relation. I can draw that uh, going out horizontally and then defining this as being 32 units. And so you can use the endpoints of this line to kind of uh, work as a, um, a, like a construction line kind of. So we can kind of use it as a reference to construct the rest of our uh, shape here. Okay. So what I would do is draw out these simple uh, or these little circles on the outside here. And you can see 2x diameter 2. So all that 2x means is that there is the same exact circle somewhere else in the drawing. So which would be this one here. So that just says that there's two of these kinds of circles. And again, that symbol, which means diameter two. So it means that these two smaller circles have a diameter of two. So I can draw one here, draw one there, and then define both of them with having a diameter of two, like so. Okay, so next we can work on the outer circle here and it, it's two circles that both have a radius of two. So from that same center point, you can draw two slightly larger circles on each end and defining them as having a diameter of four since their radius is two and diameter is radius times two. Okay, so now that we have that, next what I would work on is creating this, uh, this diagonal line that connects uh, these uh, circles together. So to, in order to do that though, I have to create this larger circle here, um, which has a radius of eight. Oh, yeah. Which would give that a diameter of 16. Okay, so now to create um this line that connects them um so how this line is connected to these circles is is through a tangent mate which means the line which means that the line connects to the circle um at one point as well as um it is it is a kind of a continuation of the circle it's kind of difficult to explain but um we have to ensure that we use a tangent mate and not a coincident mate to make sure that the line that we're drawing connecting these two circles is kind of smooth with the circle. So I'll kind of show you what I mean by that. So I'm just going to draw just a line out here with no relations. And I'm going to select this line holding control and then select the edge of the circle, also holding control. And what that does, holding control, is you can select multiple um, entities or things, uh, such as this line and the edge of the circle. And you see here, it gives me the option to add, it gives me the option to add a tangent relation. So now we have a relation uh, between the edge of the circle and this line that is tangent. And you can see tangent means that this line only touches this circle at one point. It doesn't touch the edge of the circle multiple times. It only touches one at one exact point. Okay, so 
Next, I would also create a similar relation by holding control, selecting this line entity and the edge of the circle, and again, tangent. And then that'll make this line tangent. So you may notice that the line is, is too long. So what we would do then is define where this point kind of ends here. So we want to make this uh, point of the line. Uh, we want to select that holding control, select the edge of the circle, and we want to make it uh, coincident. And coincident, again, just means that they're touching basically. So we want the this point of the line to just simply touch the edge of the circle. So we'll select coincident. So now we have a line that is tangent with these circles, as well as the endpoint of the line is coincident with the edge of the line. Like that. So now we have a lot. Now we have this line with all the appropriate relations that it needs to properly represent this sketch here. So now we just have to repeat that process. Um, and now that we know how to do that, it should be easier. So making this tangent, the line tangent with that edge, making the line tangent with this edge, and utilizing the control key. Uh, so I can select multiple entities, selecting that point, the edge of this line, selecting coincident, and oops, selecting this point in the edge of the circle, and again, making that coincident. So it's the same thing, just mirrored on the other side. And then doing that for this side as well. Making that tangent, that line tangent, that circle. Making this line tangent with this circle. Oh, okay. So SolidWorks, uh, though that though this line is tangent with this circle, it is not uh, in the way that we want it to be. So in this case, um, we can probably just make this relation and then simply, huh, okay. So it made it tangent, but kind of on the wrong side. So what I'm gonna do is just delete this line. And in order to fix it, um, Best thing to do is just simply try again, and usually that works. So I'm going to select the circle and this line, make that tangent. So then now that's on the right side. And then now holding control, selecting this line, selecting the edge of this circle, making that tangent. So now that's how we want it to be. Um, so yeah, if something like that ever happens where the relation is correct. However, it's just not in the way that we want it. Um, it's best to just delete the line and just try it again. And usually it, it just works if something like that happens to you. So again, selecting while pressing control this point, that coincident. And again, doing the same exact thing here. And I'll quickly make the final line. I will, oh, oops, I accidentally exited the sketch. So if that ever happens, uh, if your sketch looks like this, you can just right click the sketch you're working on and then click edit sketch again, and then it'll bring you back. So creating, oh, oops, sorry. Selecting the line and the edge. Why is that? Oh, that's, that's strange, sorry. Selecting this edge of the circle and then selecting this line. 
Okay, and then making that tangent. Same thing with this circle, tangent. And you can see here the points on these lines are that dark blue color, which is not good. So we got to define that as well. So it's very important that you define everything in your sketch to avoid issues later on. So selecting this point and the circle coincident. Okay. So now we have all these tangent lines drawn out. The next thing we have to do are these little um, kind of slots, except they're not slots by definition, but they're, they kind of look like it anyway. So um, what I can see is that these slots are um, made of larger circles. So um, I was hoping I could show how to do an arc. However, I think that'd be much more difficult trying to create an arc here than just making a large circle and then using that. So I'll just, so it gives us the radius of this smaller um, arc or circle. You can think of it either way. Um, and it gives us the radius of 10. So we wanna draw a circle. Doesn't matter the size because we're going to define this as having a diameter of 10. You can see here some of the definitions get a little messy. So, what you can do is um, and simply just drag everything around so you can get it, um, get it to look nice and not too cluttered or anything. So, I can just move these. It doesn't change anything. So, I have that smaller circle and then the next circle has a radius of 11. So that would give us a diameter of 22 starting from that center point. Define the larger circle as 22. So now we can use these circles to kind of create um, these kind of slots, slot looking things. Okay. So in order to do that, um, what I would do is, so how I would do this is I would create, cause it says it gives us the, the height of this kind of, uh, this shape here as six. So what I would do is use a midpoint line. Um, and you could also see it gives you some options. I'm gonna use the option that makes it uh, for construction. And what that means is um, in your sketch, it kind of makes it so, uh, it kind of distinguishes the line um, as a construction line and it won't interfere with um, how SolidWorks resolves a, an enclosed area. So I'm going to create a midpoint line starting from where this circle meets this line here. And I'm simply just going to make a vertical line. So then, uh -huh. Robert, can I make a can I make a suggestion that might actually make this a quicker operation? Sure. So if you draw a line, so you already have here, I'll see if I can annotate. Um, you already have this line here. Um, you can just draw a horizontal li a line here that is parallel to this line and offset okay. it by three inches. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that, that will accomplish the same thing. Feel free to do it either way. I just uh -huh. wanted to point that out. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That, that would be easier. So yeah, that just goes to show that there's so many ways you can you can reach the same exact outcome. So like Cam said, um, just simply uh, just simply creating a line that's coincident with these two circles and then adding a relation between this line and this line that says they should be parallel. So that makes that line parallel. So it's not fully defined yet. So 
we have to create we have to uh, define how far these two parallel lines will be from each other, which would be three since it's halfway. So yeah, yeah, that, that was easier. Thank you. Um, but yeah, there's so many ways you can accomplish the exact same outcome. And, and that's one of the reasons we encourage you guys to kind of play around in SolidWorks even when we're not in these trainings and just kind of learn by pushing buttons and seeing what happens. Um, I think Robert said it perfectly. There's a million different ways to do everything and everyone does it slightly different. So um, kind of finding your way to do SolidWorks mm -hmm. um, is important. And I guarantee there will be moments along the course of the next year um, where you have a moment where someone goes, no, 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 just do it this way. And you'll learn a new way. And maybe it's easier. Maybe it's not. Um, it doesn't mean either way is wrong. It just means there's a million ways to do everything in SolidWorks. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I completely didn't understand what you guys did there where you created that, uh, line. Mm -hmm. Um, can you re-explain that maybe? Sure, sure. Uh, this line here? Yeah, that line. Yep, okay. So um, all I did was, so I got the line tool and then um, starting this line um, anywhere on this uh, circle here, um, that just makes it so, uh, that adds a relation. If I start the line from this outer circle, that uh, that makes the relation that this line will be coincident with that circ with the edge of that circle. So that just means the line will start um, just from the circle. So it, it you see here it picks like a weird spot because um, it's just uh, it's still starting from the edge of the circle, but yeah, it just starts from a weird spot for some reason. Anyway, so I have this line starting from the circle. And then I'm just going to connect it to this other circle. It doesn't matter where on the circle, because we're going to say that this line that we're making should be horizontal or parallel with the center or this uh, line here. So Sophia, SolidWorks is smart enough. So you see how that line turned orange, that circle? Yeah, I see it. Um, SolidWorks is smart enough to say if we click on that orange line, then we want the line to be, or that point to be coincident along that circle. So to always be touching that circle. Mm -hmm. um, it makes assumptions as you go. 99.9% .9 of the time, those assumptions will be correct. Um, there, are, there are ways to break those assumptions in SolidWorks, but that's something I'm, I'm sure we'll go over at a later time. And if we don't, we, it may be a situation you never come up with, um, Kind of in practice so does that does that make sense that the that solidworks itself is making some assumptions here that are helping us go faster but aren't necessarily something that you kind of click through every step yeah yeah that makes sense okay it was a great question also yeah so uh yeah i'm just gonna click on the edge of that inner circle so now we just we have an undefined line because it's not fully defined yet, but its only relations are that this point here is coincident with that uh, smaller circle and this one here is coincident with this outer circle. So in order to, um, so what I would do is I would make a rule or a relation for this line that says um, it, it should be horizontal. And so now this line will always stay horizontal no matter what. So now that we have that, we can do a smart dimension because there's still it's still not fully defined yet since we can move this line inside of that kind of ring, I guess. We can make we can define the length between this line and this line as being three. So now that gets defined. So yeah, did you understand what I did? If not, you can uh, ask, I can explain. Yeah, yeah, it. that makes sense. Awesome. So yeah, so now we have 
Um, so you see, we have just three two times, but it, it means the same as as how they have it here. It's just um, they made it. They probably made it a different way, or that's just a visual uh, representation of the sketch. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so now we have to do the same on the right, and you'll you see that it's it's pretty messy right now, but we can clean all this up uh, as soon as I make this that part on the right. So you see here, SOLIDWORKS made an assumption. So it already did the two coincident um, relations as well as the horizontal relation. So it, it kind of did uh, what I was going, what I did on the last one for me. So it made that easier. So all I really have to do here is make a smart dimension from this smaller line to this line. And define that as three. And so now um, we have what's on the left. So this, Robert, this also is potentially a good place to go over mirrors if you feel like doing that. Um, oh, yeah. Um, not 100% okay. not necessary if you don't want to, but this might actually be a good point to do that. OK, yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'm just going to delete this line because, yeah, I want to try and show how mirroring can be very helpful. So if I remember, I don't often mirror sketches. So this might be a bit of a learning process for me as well. So I believe, OK, so since I have the zoom thing on the top, it's kind of hard to see the it's kind of hard to see the toolbar on the top. Anyway, so I'm going to select these two smaller lines. So and, you're going to uh -huh. you're going to want to click the mirror tool first. OK. Did so you see where it says mirror entities? Mirror. Yes. OK. Mirror, OK. You're going to click on your two mirror and ent two entities right there. Right. And then. And then mirror about and then in this case it should let you choose the center point if it doesn't we're going to need to put a construction line there right yeah uh, Let's see if solidworks was smart enough today no nah, i think i need a line so you do yeah. you need uh, yep okay yep so what i'm gonna do is just make a construction line here so from the center point that just goes vertical uh just like that and now I can use this line as a reference to mirror about. So mirror entities select that smaller line, the two smaller lines, and then where it says mirror about, I want to mirror it um, about this vertical line. I just made that vertical construction line. And you can see it gives us a preview of how to um, of how it would look on the opposite side, so that looks good. And now it created uh, this exact thing on the other side, so that saves you a lot of time. Uh, and thank you, Cam, for bringing that up because I often don't uh, I often don't mirror when I'm sketching. I, it's more of like a uh, when I'm like working 3D and stuff. But yeah, that's how you could save a lot of time. Uh, and I also realized I could have done that with these lines because I realized that took me a while. So yeah, use, making use of the mirror entities tool when you're sketching can be extremely helpful as you just saw. Uh, so yeah, did you, did you understand uh, how I mirrored it? If not, I can go through it again. It's really simple. Uh, Sophia. Well, it's, it's certainly simple once you understand it. The initial process can be yeah, Cer certainly challenging. Yeah, yeah, I can show you again if you'd like, or if you got it. Sorry, Sophia, I think I cut you off there. Oh, I was just asking if you guys said some, if you guys mentioned my name. Oh yeah, I was just uh, asking if you uh, understood the mirroring part. So oh, I yeah, yeah. Mirror Oh yeah, okay, awesome. Okay, so now we basically have everything kind of sketched out. 
Um, so what I would do at this point is maybe just clean up the sketching because there's a lot of extra things that are kind of just there for construction. So with the trim entities, I can trim out this, this, as it's not necessary. And this here, as well as this. Um, but before I do that, hold on, I'm going to cancel that. The, the other important thing to know about trim entities is that it's a phenomenal tool, but it's also probably SolidWorks's least smart tool. So <laughs> a lot of SolidWorks tools are designed to make sure you don't make mistakes. Um, the trim tool is not designed that way. Um, it's like trying to use um, an excavator to cut a piece of paper, right? You can do a lot of damage to your part very quickly, um, but if you use it right, you'll, you'll get the result you want every time. That was a terrible analogy, but, uh, but um, it's very easy to accidentally trim a part or a line in a sketch that you wanted to keep. Um, it's just always important to remember control Z is your best friend when you're doing CAD. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And control Y, most people don't know this, but control Y is redo. So if you're ever in those situations, those two keystrokes will save you a million times over. Um, and as always, as you'll hear me say a million times throughout the season, save it a million times. You should be saving constantly, um, more so in code than in SolidWorks, but it's also very relevant here. Right. So um, yeah, while, while I was trimming, I noticed uh, some dark blue here. And I also see that it says underdefined. Um, which I'm not really sure why this, oh, what is this a part of? Oh, I see. I accidentally created a line here that I didn't mean to create. I think that's what that is. Okay, yeah, so I deleted that and now we're fully defined. So yeah, I noticed that little um, blue like point, I guess. And that all that was was just a, a line that I accidentally created that uh, aligned with this line perfectly. So it was kind of hard to see, but I just simply deleted it because it wasn't used for anything. But yeah, so anyway, uh, so yeah. Trimming, um, you don't have to trim because when, when you extrude, if I wanted to extrude this 2D sketch, I could just leave out, um, I could just exclude like this area and like all, all the unnecessary unclosed areas, I could just leave them out while when I'm extruding. However, um, this is optional, but if you just want to make your 2D sketch kind of be presentable, I guess uh, it is helpful for that. So I'm just gonna sketch, or I mean, I'm just gonna trim out some unnecessary things here. And what this does is if I wanna show someone else uh, a sketch for a part in a 2D fashion, it's kind of easier to understand and less, less cluttered and stuff. So now we kind of have the bare uh, essentials, I guess, or yeah, what the, the crucial parts of this, of this 2D sketch here. I can also get rid of this as well. And so now that leaves, that leaves behind basically all I really want if I wanted to create this exact part, but we're just using it for practice. So yeah. Um, yeah, but did you have any questions about anything? Uh, I can go over anything that was hard to understand or anything like that. If not. Um, So yeah, the rest of these um, just seem kind of tedious, like this key here. There's a bunch of definitions and stuff. This doesn't seem too challenging. Yeah, this, this is not that hard. Um, but I do like how this one incorporates kind of an oval shape, which I'm kind of curious. So I've never really sketched out an oval, so I want to see. 
so um so i i'd assume i'd use an ellipse here to create this bottom oval part so okay so i'm just gonna draw oh, okay let's see so i'm just gonna draw that and then i'm gonna select this normal uh or sorry select this normal to oh, oops normal to oh sorry okay there normal to and then let's see if i can define this so um i can define its height by just doing this whoops this and this okay so i can define its height quite easily 140 and then i can define this here okay so that's pretty easy so yeah we made an oval shape i just wanted to see if i knew how to do this um because i've never really catted this because or sketched this out because it's an uncommon shape um, especially in robotics and stuff, but yeah, that is not too hard to do. So yeah, this just seems tedious. Um, seems simple. Just trying to see if there's any other things. Robert, maybe try and do something with a linear pattern. Linear. Oh, okay. Oh, or, yeah, a yeah. or a circular pattern. I don't know if you have a good example of that in your... I have a good example, actually. Okay. Sheet. Okay. So say i wanted to okay so i'm just gonna make a circle here uh, i'll just define this as 100. so say i wanted to make um let me think something say okay say i wanted to make a disc that could hold like balls in them. So I'm just going to define this as 25, 25. Define this as 20. OK, so say that this smaller circle here is a, so this would be a top-down view of a disk that can hold um, spheres. So, so kind of like a like a revolver, I guess. Um, anyway, if I wanted to use this thing that's called um, what's it called? Sorry. Um, linear sketch pattern, or there's also circular sketch pattern. If I wanted to kind of I'll show you. So if I wanted to make four of these kind of uh, smaller circles in a circular pattern within this disk, what I can do is I can select this and it, and like I can select how many instances I want. So if I want five, I can do five or if I want seven, so this is helpful for those weird numbers like seven or five, where like you can't really use your a horizontal line as a reference. Uh, this is really helpful for that. So like nine or something. Um, but the circles are kind of big. So it, it's do. also helpful in that situation because you can see nine wouldn't fit. So you may know you have a set area that you can work with, and looking at that, your team may say, "We need we need to fit nine. And you can look at this and you can immediately go, we can't fit nine. We have to change the diameter of that inner circle. We have to make these either smaller or larger or somehow um, alter it. It also saves you from having to pull out everyone's favorite TI-84 graphic calculator um, <laughs> and do all of these angle calculations on there. Um, right. Yeah. So yeah, if I want five instances of the smaller circle, um, it, uh, I can just click check. 
So you hear, see here, it's not, uh, these circles are blue because they can still be, um, it's not defined yet. And so all I would have to do to define this to how I want it, is I can just say this point, this point and this point, I can just make them horizontal. So that defines this from, okay, I see. And then I would also have to, how could I define this? Um, hmm, it's kind of tricky. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. What I could also do is I could make a line coming from the center to this outer circle here. So that line isn't defined yet, but you could see here when I'm moving this, um, this line is also changing length. So what I could do is I could just say that this line and this line must be, oops. I could say this line and this line must be um, equal length. And then that should define it, yeah. And I could just say this line is a construction line. So, so now you can see all the circles are fully defined because the black line color and that's how you would define it um so yeah it, it, it's kind of tricky but usually when you um when you have your sketch that is underdefined, like if the, any part of it is blue the best way to figure out how to define it is by simply moving uh dragging it around and that way you can kind of figure out how uh it needs to be defined so even though earlier when I first created this circular pattern, it looked defined, it, it wasn't, um, it still wasn't fully defined. So but yeah, now I'll show you how to do a linear pattern. So similar to a circular pattern, it's you're kind of repeating something, but rather uh, instead of in a circular fashion, it's in a linear fashion. So so Robert, before we move on, Sophia yeah. and Kat, are you guys feeling okay with the circular pattern? Oh yeah, sorry. Does this does this make sense? If not, I can I can go through it again because yeah, it I kind of had to figure it out as I went as well. But yeah. The these are things that, and and Robert, obviously you're doing a phenomenal job, um, but these are things that, like I said before, the more you use SolidWorks, the more natural it's going to feel. So it's totally okay and don't ever feel like you've made a mistake or you weren't paying attention or anything. If yeah. in three months we're asking you to do a circular pattern and you're like, I don't remember, can you please show me again? Like that is totally okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is a phenomenal introduction. And like I said, Robert is doing a great job with that, but um, we, we aren't by any means expecting you to walk away from this and go, oh, well now I can cat a robot. Um, all on my own with no help, no questions, nothing like that. Like this is 100% a learning opportunity and SolidWorks is a learning tool. So, um, and don't hesitate if you're working on something on your own outside of these meetings and you come across something that you have no idea how to fix, send Robert or myself, um, ideally Robert and copy me on it. Um, any questions you might have um, related to whatever project you're working on. And I'm sure we can get back to you with some solutions. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Sounds text me or Discord, whatever it is. And if you need that information, uh, I can give it to you. But uh, yeah, if you're ever having issues with, uh, if you're canning something on your own, I'd be more than happy to assist you if you run into an issue. So, yeah. So far, it all makes sense, I think. But I just want to try it myself to see, because I know like, yeah, right now I'll understand yeah. it, but then like actually doing it will be a bit different. Of yeah, course. it's the same for me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm still trying to download SolidWorks again. It's not coming up, so I'm uh. not sure why. Yeah, and Kat, I'm gonna double check that the licenses are still active too. Um at, probably after this meeting, because it's going to take me a little while to find that information. But um, before our next meeting, definitely, we'll make sure you have a functioning version of SolidWorks on your computer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, 
and and all of these meetings are of course recorded so you are able to go back and rewatch them if that's helpful mm -hmm. yeah and you can watch them on double speed with captions so Ooh. <laughs> i know very very fancy here <laughs> yeah awesome all right so i guess i'll introduce linear patterns so um okay how i would do this is so where it says entities to pattern i say if i wanted to to repeat this entire thing here i would select the entities that i wanted to repeat and then um let's see Hey, Robert, um, yeah. sorry yeah. to interrupt. No, no, no. It's all um, I have to go. Okay. But thank you so much. I learned a lot. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for showing up. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Nice thank you. See you later. Thanks for bye. coming, Sophia. Of course. Yeah. All right. So, anyway. Um, yeah, I'm trying to kind of trying to figure out this as well for myself. So I don't often use this, so it'll be a learning experience for me as well. Um, hmm. Maybe let me try that again. So selecting entities. So Robert, you're trying to do a linear pattern right now? Yeah. So the first thing you're gonna need is a line. Okay. Um, like this? Yep, that, work, that works. Um, all right, and so now what you can do is you can click linear sketch pattern. Perfect. Right. Um, linear. Yep, right there. Yeah. And so now you are gonna want, so you have entities to pattern. Direction two, direction one. All right, so click on entities to pattern and, and then just click on the top circle. So this one right here. Okay. Okay. Um, and then we want to, all right, linear pattern, direction, x axis. Oh, this is, all right, so. Do you see this right here, how this is 0 0.1? Yeah. Change that to like 10. Make it something big so that we can see if it changes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So right. you, you, were, you were doing it, but your scale was just too, too I large. See. I see. So if you want to change this now, so if you make that like 30, that way you have 10 inches of space in between. Uh-huh. Um, and so what you can do now is this is gonna be the number of entities down here. So you have your, and that's including your initial one kind of as zero. Okay. So you can change that, make that three and it'll make another one 10 uh -huh. centimeters down. Okay. Um, and then down here is if you wanna do along the Y axis. So you actually, okay. you didn't need that line. That was a mistake on my part. But okay. if you change the number that I just circled, it will start doing uh, instances along the Y axis. So if you wanted, um, a second row, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you could you could change that number to two, three, four, and that will give you rows. I see. All right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I figured it out now. So, awesome. so what I what I was trying to do initially was so just um, make a linear pattern with this whole uh, this whole thing I have sketched here. So if I select everything. So say this was a small part, yep. um, what I could do is, uh, I can, okay, so like if I wanted to make kind of an array of these, so like if I wanted to like maybe 3D print them, I know in the 3D printing software, you can kind of fit more, you can like kind of repeat it, but if you wanted to do it in like SolidWorks. You, you could do it this way, yes. Yeah. Um, you could also do this with a 3D object. So if you had extruded that first one, mm -hmm. 
you could then do a linear pattern and it would copy all of your extrusions as well. Yeah. So that's one use case. Um, and there are, there's, very, there's many things you could use something like this, the linear pattern tool for, but I cannot think. They're very useful for belly pans. For what? Belly Sorry. pans, if you have to cut belly lightning pan. holes or things like that. Um, oh, if you no. want to cut really pretty lightning holes, this is how you oh, do it. Okay. So if you ever see those teams that have like that kind of like cool geometric pattern that's repeated across all of their aluminum, um, mm -hmm. all of those lightning holes, this is how they do it. Um, oh, okay. Is they use a linear sketch, generally speaking. Um, you can also go through after you do this and delete certain ones. So if you had, so if you knew um, you could do four in from the left and five in from the right, so you had to delete one of these, you could highlight it and just delete it. And it's not going to mess up your linear pattern at all. Right. Uh -huh. um, because as soon as you click done, they're all kind of separate entities. They're no longer constrained to each other. Except in that fashion. Yeah. So with this, uh, so it's not, they're not fully defined, I noticed. So I'm just going to define them as so now they're all defined. So all I had to do was just define the spacing between them. So I could I could alter this to make it smaller and it repeats for all of them. Okay. So yeah. Um, so that's a use case for a linear pattern as well as a circular pattern, which are these smaller circles in, inside. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I think. That's about it for what I had for 2D sketching introduction. Um, so if there's any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, yeah, I think that's about everything I wanted to kind of cover today. Um, yeah. Oh, here's a good example of where you could use a circular pattern uh, really well to kind of make this gear looking thing, uh, as well as these smaller circles here. Yeah. That's all right. That's a that's a fun shape. Yeah. It's pretty cool. These progressively get more advanced. USB logo. All oh, right. Yeah. Now we're now we're getting into fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I will send uh this PDF and it has a lot of cool things you can practice. Uh ooh, this looks cool. Yeah, so this right here would be a perfect example of where you could use a circular pattern really well to make this uh, part very efficiently. Um, but yeah, but if you want to challenge yourself to try and make some, anything like these, uh, I'd be very impressed. And of course, if you need help, that's also okay. Uh, I'll be willing to help. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I really had for today. Uh, if there's no questions, then I think I'll end the recording there. All right. So uh, let's see. So Kate is hosting the meeting right now. So that works. I, I think she made me the host. She made you the host. 